We're continuing our series on diverse heroes here on Top 10 Nerd. Today we're taking a look at African American heroes, and it was hard to pick who got on here, so hopefully you all like it and we can do a part two. For now, I'm Sasha, and these are the Top 10 African American heroes. Let's get started. Number 10, Falcon, Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson debuted in Captain America number 117 back in 1969, and has the distinction of being the first African American superhero in mainstream comics. Black Panther who predates him is the first African hero in mainstream comics. Gene Cohen had this to say about the Falcon's creation. In the late 1960s, when news of the Vietnam War and civil rights protests were regular occurrences, and Stan always wanting to be at the forefront of things started bringing these headlines into the comics. One of the biggest steps we took in this direction came in Captain America. I enjoyed drawing people of every kind. I drew as many different types of people as I could into the scenes. I illustrated and I loved drawing black people. I always found their features interesting, and so much of their strength, spirit, and wisdom written on their faces. I approached Stan, as I remember, with the idea of introducing an African-American hero, and he took to it right away. I looked at several African-American magazines and used them as the basis of inspiration for bringing the Falcon to life. The Falcon proved popular from the outset, which is why there was such backlash when he received a retcon that took him from kind social worker to street thug. It didn't go well, and people like to pretend it didn't happen, until they wouldn't let us. Thanks, 2010. Sam Wilson would take up the mantle of Captain America for a bit, but would become the Falcon again with the return of Steve Rogers, or rather with how they resolved the Steve Rogers Hail Hydra debacle. Number 9. Misty Knight. Misty Knight first debuted in Marvel Premiere number 21 back in 1975, but would retroactively be said to have appeared as an unnamed character years earlier. She was largely inspired by the black exploitation era at the time, hence her kung fu skills and bionic assets. Fun fact, her and Iron Fist had the first interracial kiss between superheroes in mainstream comics in 1977. Misty Knight was on the rise in the police force when an explosion took her arm and she got a cool metal one instead from Tony Stark, and so she joined the Metal Arms Club. She and Colleen Wing would take on crime and have a detective agency called Nightwing Restorations. It was all too cool for school. Misty Knight needs more cred and highlights. More bionic arm action, please. Number eight, John Stewart. Now, John Stewart, the Green Lantern, debuts in Green Lantern number 87 back in 1971 or 1972. It's not quite clear if it was December or January. And he is the first African American superhero over at DC Comics. He would go on to become a beloved Green Lantern thanks to his unique approach to his secret identity, which was ultimately to abandon it and go around unmasked to show people in his community that you could do it, you could be a hero. He also just had his act way more together than how. Jordan at the time. That man was a mess. One of his creators, Neil Adams, stated, We ought to have a black Green Lantern. Not because we're liberals, but because it just makes sense. Jon Stewart would even become THE Green Lantern for some thanks to the Justice League animated series, which for many was their first introduction to these characters. Jon Stewart, definitely a welcome addition to the core of way too many humans protecting one planet in the entire galaxy. Go Green Lantern Corps! Number 7, Blade. Blade first debuted in Tomb of Dracula number 10 in 1973 and vampire hunting is just cool. From the start, the fact that Blade was a black man was taken into account. In a 2003 interview, Gene Cohen stated on his creation, Marv told me Blade was a black man, and we talked about how he should dress and how he should look, very heroic looking. The Blades, that was Marv's idea, but I dressed him up, I put the leather jacket on him, and so on. Blade proved popular and would actually end up adapted in a series of films starring Wesley Snipes, which some superhero historians claim don't get enough credit as to their place in the superhero cinematic landscape. Blade actually had a resurgence in general in the 90s. Vampires and associated lore are like that. They come in waves. Sometimes you barely hear about them, other times there's no escape. Blade's name is actually Eric Brooks, but I mean, why call him that when you can call him Blade? He's also part vampire, it's just everything about Blade is cool. Number six, Black Hammer. Black Hammer is an interesting outing. It's a series created by Jeff Lemire that initially centers around a group of heroes trapped in a small town after saving the world. They can't leave, as evidenced by what happened to the leader of their group, Black Hammer. Now, even though Black Hammer isn't a main character at the series' outset, his presence is definitely felt, and as the series goes on, you learn more and more about him. He is a Thor type of hero, though he himself is not a god. He wields a hammer that brings him in league with them. However, despite this, he strives to keep a hero life balance, and is an inspiration to his daughter, who would take up his mantle as the second Black Hammer. Black Hammer also had a lot of spin offs and took quite a while to come out. It's one of those series that has a polarizing ending as well. Number five, Mr. Terrific. For this, we're talking about the second Mr. Terrific, Michael Holt, who debuted in Spectre number 54 back in 1997. He becomes Mr. Terrific after being inspired by the story of the first Mr. Terrific, as told to him by the Spectre as he stands on a bridge contemplating suicide. Michael Holt will be one of those characters who would just get more and more fleshed out. Yes, he was a genius, an entrepreneur, and all that good stuff,
up, but he also had something all good characters need, flaws to balance him out. Why was he on that bridge? Well, cause he got into an argument with his wife about his atheism versus her faith, which made her late for church and she got into an accident on the way there, which would cause him to have a whole crisis. Mr. Terrific would go on to become a key member of the JSA, and he has found his way into adaptations. He may not be the best known out there, but for those looking for someone they may not have seen before, Mr. Terrific is one to watch. Number 4. Jack in the Box There have been a couple of Jack in the Boxes over in Astro City, so let's start with the first, Jack Johnson. He was a toy inventor in the 60s who broke down racial barriers to rise in the ranks of a prominent toy firm, only to be disillusioned when he realized his inventions were being used for criminal purposes. After protesting got him fired, he adapted his inventions as a weapons arsenal, first just taking on the company, which had also kidnapped his father, but then expanding his operations to protecting more of his area of Astro City. His son would take up his mantle years after his death, becoming the second Jack in the Box, but would end up having to decide between his superhero career and his family when he met future versions of his children destroyed by his heroic legacy. It was all really compelling, honestly. Check it out if you have the chance. Number 3. Spawn Spawn is Albert Francis Simmons. He was created by Todd McFarlane and given life after he broke away from mainstream comics, even though he had had the concept for Spawn brewing for some time. After he is murdered by his best friend, who also marries his wife, that's ice cold, he makes a deal with the devil and becomes an agent of it. Memory stripped and faded, but things break through and Spawn cannot be contained, and he finds a new purpose in life as an anti-hero, with an awesome cape. They have done more adaptations and McFarlane one day hopes for another crack at another movie. Number 2. Cyborg Victor Stone, great name by the way, is transformed into Cyborg after a horrific accident that leaves the majority of his body destroyed. His father saves him using technology he was working on, at first just high tech, later on apocalyptian tech for New 52 purposes. Cyborg would first be seen on the new Teen Titans and would have a compelling struggle, having to go on with all these attachments and abilities he never asked for, divorced from the life he had expected and for a time the only one he wanted. Cyborg has become a fan favorite, he would be added as a core member of the Justice League during the New 52, but there are mixed reactions to that in the long run, as many miss the relationships and dynamics he had with the Teen Titans. Number 1. Luke Cage, aka Power Man I don't know, I mean his real name in my opinion is cooler than Power Man, but Luke Cage has another distinction. He was the first African American character to be featured as a protagonist and title character of his own book, so no starting off somewhere else, just bam, straight to the cage. Luke Cage, hero for hire, but it would be renamed Luke Cage Power Man, and then eventually Luke Cage and Iron Fist when the black exploitation era ended or began to fade rather, which was what had been keeping both those characters afloat. They were paired together to try and save them, and it worked. Carl Lucas is born and raised in Harlem and betrayed by friend William Stryker, cause don't trust people named Stryker over in the Marvel Universe, don't do it. He gets his powers after being experimented upon in prison. Upon escaping, he decides to use his new powers to keep his neighborhood safe and make some money on the side. Luke Cage is cool and is translated well out of the era that spawned him. So those were 10 African American superheroes. Please want a part two, and let me know some of your favorites down below. I'm Sasha, and thanks so much for watching Top 10 Nerd. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you never miss a vid. I will see you again soon. Bye bye.